Well, the first thing that I that I've noticed is I don't know if we have a policy on universal health coverage in Uh That's number one. Um, but as I understand, perhaps is still uh, being drafted. Uh, but while the policy is being drafted, I think uh, it is important to, to think of um, um, the issue of equity. Uh, because as we know, in Namibia, we, we have uh, sectors and all lives, or in all spheres of life. Uh, so, uh, for example, if we just look at this, uh, I think this data comes from the Namibia Household Income and Expenditure Survey. 2015-16. Uh, so if you look at this uh, uh, graph here, uh, you have uh, quintiles, uh, wealth quintiles. Uh, those are, are five of them. Uh, you have the forest up to the riches. That's the last uh, quintile. Uh, well, if you look at that, you can see that um, Those who cannot afford health care, and uh, uh, I think we know uh, all of us, are mostly the poor. So we are talking about the poor. Uh, I, I, I'll presume when we say universal health coverage, we are more talking about uh, including those uh, that are excluded, as also alluded to by the previous uh, uh, presenters. Uh, so. You see that amongst the poor, 28 percent of those that are poor cannot uh, cannot afford seeking health care when they need to seek the health care. Um, whilst amongst the rich, that's uh, that's 11 percent. So that's the uh, inequality in accessing health care. Uh, so so what I'm driving at is is universal health care uh, uh, coverage going to bridge this gap, this uh, inequity between the rich and the poor? Or is it going to perpetuate the, the current situation? I think it's uh, important to think about uh, equity issues um, as we talk about uh, this, uh, this policy. Um, another, another aspect is, uh, uh, as I alluded to already, Insurance is biased towards uh, those that are uh, those that are rich. Uh, other studies, uh, I, uh, I think, is the National Health Demographic, uh, Demographic Survey also points to that uh, to that uh, effect uh, that the women, uh, the young, uh, the unemployed are the most being uh, excluded in our society. Okay, so. Um, as we, as we talk about the, the, the uh, UHC policy, I think we should consider that, um, uh, you know, studies have shown that uh, those, if you establish uh, a, a program, a health program, usually those who access are the rich, uh, even if you establish for the poor. The reason being that, uh, it's, all, it's not only uh, the financial burden that the poor have uh, to access health care, but uh, they have also financial burdens in many other areas. For example, they will not be able to afford, even if you say, well, <clears throat> I live 330 kilometers away from uh, the hospital, I need to go to a hospital, but uh, even if you provide that universal health uh, coverage to me, uh, I will not be able to access because I'm, I'm very far from the facility and I cannot walk to the, to the facility, it's very far. So, uh, so those are the issues that, uh, that affect the poor. Number one, the poor, because they live very far from information, uh, even though uh, services might be available, uh, they don't have the information with them uh, to access uh, healthcare. So, those issues uh, should be the things that we, we should be working towards because that, that's the target uh, population that we, are, that we are talking about. Um, okay, so in, in, in designing universal health uh, coverage, we might find that 
will only be, be increasing, be perpetuating the, the, the current situation where we have the rich uh, being the ones who benefit the most uh, compared to the poor. Uh, another issue of equity that I wanted to talk about is uh, the issue of uh, SEMAS. I think it was uh, well pointed out. Um, well, I just did this. This is just a basic uh, um, a graph that I did. SEMAS members and those that are not SEMAS members. Uh, considering the 20 percent of the population that is that is uncovered. Uh, so what you see on top there, the blue line, that's uh, the spending per person, the the CMAS the beneficiary, and then the the orange line, that's the spending uh, that the Minister of Health spends per person on uh, uh, per person uh, who access, uh, I mean who who is under the the. the uh, the umbrella of the Minister of Health and Social Services. So what we see there is that uh, this situation also perpetuates inequality. So, uh, like I said before, uh, it's very important to take in cognizance that uh, sometimes we design things that would already perpetuate, would perpetuate the already uh, Western situation. Uh, so. You see that same as, as the government, this is all government spending, uh, we say, so I don't want to define this for health and finance, but this is all government spending. But uh, the average spending per person uh, is for, for a Minister of Health beneficiary is, is only less than, uh, is less than half what is spent for the same as beneficiary. And considering the, 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 uh, that component, I don't know if it's, is it 12% or is it uh, of the entire population uh, that has uh, SEMAS. Uh, so it's, it's a huge uh, inequality uh, that we see there. Uh, so, uh, say you talked about the reforms, uh, and perhaps uh, SEMAS uh, might be reformed uh, or so, uh, but I think it's an important component of uh, that should be considered for the reform. Because, um, like I said, it's uh, left alone uh, perpetuates a lot of inequality. Um, okay, so uh, whereas what we want to do is to uh, promote uh, equity in healthcare. All right, so that's uh, number one point. Number two point, I want to move to. Um, the sustainability. Um, well, it's very, I, I, I love uh, the concept of uh, universal health coverage. Um, it's ideal that everybody should be covered, but in reality, we may face a lot of challenges. Um, so I think we need to think about uh, sustainability. Um, I heard about um, from the good doctor, I heard about the, 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 the essential health uh, service package that is being reviewed. I think it's very important that uh, that package should be costed uh, because those services, those are the services that will uh, take up money. Uh, so those services uh, should be costed to understand or to determine uh, the extent to which uh, universal health coverage uh, will cost. Uh, what is it going to cost? Uh, can we afford it? Uh, can we not afford it? Um, experiences from other countries shows that um, with these uh, types of uh, uh, programs, uh, like in Rwanda, uh, the government end up uh, uh, subsidizing a lot of uh, the, the services. So how is it going to be sustainable? Is it really sustainable economically, uh, given the, the very high debt levels uh, that we have currently, um, given the, the high unemployment rate, uh, given the small tax base of, uh, uh, of, the, of the economy, and also given the uh, low economic growth for the recent past. Um, is the government going to afford 
or is it just a fancy way, to, is, is it just a fancy concept to, to, to talk about? So, um, so um, this graph perhaps is not very clear. So I just try to, to, to play with figures. Uh, some of the assumptions may not be correct, uh, and uh, just for illustra illustration purposes. Um, in the absence of a costed uh, essential health services package, I just decided to take this. I thought I had a lot of time. Uh, so I just tried to compare this. So well, if we are talking about equity, then uh, spending the CMAS beneficiary should make sense that the same spending to the other person, isn't it? Doesn't it make sense? Yes. Or do we say no because you are employed, uh, you spending, we are going to spend more on you because you are employed, but because you are unemployed, we are not going to spend more on you. So it makes sense that uh, what we are spending on CMAS, uh, unless it's, uh, it's not, uh, uh, unless it's not uh, uh, correct spending on CMAS, uh, unless there are some other Things that uh, that are that, that, are, that are also questionable. But if we agree that the spending on CMAS is a correct spending, then we can uh, say let's spend the whole amount, the, the same amount per person, the entire 80% of the population. And that's what I uh, that, that's what I found here. Uh, so if I do that, that's it's a lot of money for government. So they might I doubt if they can afford that. So this is the, this is actually billions. Uh, so if the whole government actually uh, takes up the difference between what is spent per person, uh, the Minister of Health, and what is spent on CMAS, that's the difference. So then you see that it's a lot of money, 9.5 billion. Uh, that was the figure for 2020, uh, 10.4 billion uh, projecting using pro uh, population projections. Uh, and move, uh, going forward, 11.3 billion. Uh, so it might be very costly, but we don't know. Uh, but this is just a, an assumption. So that's what I'm saying. I think we have to think about uh, sustainability. Um, uh, what about our human resources for health? Yeah, we. We often hear reports, I don't know if it's true, uh, they are, that there are not uh, enough uh, health workers. So with uh, universal health coverage, what do we do? Do we use the same people? Or is there another recruitment drive or a parallel to the, to the, to the, to the universal health coverage? Yeah, are those issues considered? Uh, those, uh, uh, those are uh, other issues. Uh, the social uh, sustainability, political sustainability, there are also uh, issues that uh, should be considered. Um, maybe I should move forward. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, what about quality health services? Or well, what are we talking about uh, in that dimension? I, I, I don't know, maybe you're understanding uh, so what are we talking about service delivery, the implementation? Uh, how is that going to impact the uh, implementation? Um, because uh, studies have shown that what will result would be uh, if we adopt the social health insurance, uh, for example. Uh, everybody goes. Um, the health seeking increases, um, even unnecessarily. Uh, number one, that is not so good for sustainability, financial sustainability. Um, number two, we'll would be having maybe double the lines that we have already now with uh, current health facilities. I'm not so sure, but it's, it's just what, uh, uh, just uh, food for thought. Um, and the last, uh, the last point about the impact. Um, are we just talking about, uh, what are we talking about, the impact? What are the benefits vis-a-vis uh, -vis the costs? Uh, uh, do we really understand what would be the, or do we, do we just want to do it, or do we just understand what would be the benefit vis-a-vis -vis the, the, the costs? Um, I think it's important also to, 
to look at those uh, dimensions. And uh, uh, lastly, about things about corruption and so forth, we had heard a lot about SEMAS. And what are the safeguards uh, against such, uh, such things, exploitation of the system? I've already mentioned one of them, which is uh, moral hazard. A lot of people, uh, when you have free, uh, when you have insurance, they will tend to, uh, to seek a lot of health care, and that has been shown. So I think we have to guard against that to, to, to ensure that there's uh, sustainability. Uh, and also that uh, as a government, I think, yeah, I think it should not just be considered as the Minister of Health, but as a government. Because uh, you can deal with health, but if you don't deal with unemployment and poverty, it might defeat the whole purpose of uh, investment. So I, I thank you.